listening to the English with Kirsty podcast from www.englishwithkirsty.com. Here I'll be sharing with you tips, information and other learning resources so that you can improve your business English. Hello everybody and welcome to the English with Kirsty podcast. And today we're going to start a three-part series on something which a lot of people speak to me about. It's using the telephone. So often my customers have said that they feel quite shy when they have to use the telephone and speak English um, because you've got no time to, with an email, you can think about what you want to say, you can check it, you can look things up. But speaking on the telephone is much more immediate and you have to respond to the other person or or there'll be a, an uncomfortable silence. So often people come to me and say that they want to improve their speaking skills, particularly when speaking on the telephone, because then you haven't got any visual cues like you would have in a meeting or um, you really have to focus on your speaking and listening skills. So for the next three episodes, we're going to look at some things that you can do to make it easier for you when you have to make calls in English and also some things that you can do before the call so that you're prepared for it. So today we're going to look at several points. We've got four and then the next two weeks there'll be three in each episode. So the first thing that you can do is to prepare for the call. And I don't mean to write a long list of things that you're going to say because I tried that once when I was about 15 and I had to make my first call to an organization in Germany. I needed some information and I wrote out exactly what I was going to say. But of course, that doesn't help because you don't know what the other person will say and then you'll lose your place. It's not like a script for a play. It's the, the other person is going to say whatever they want to say and, and you can't plan for that. You can't know what they'll say. So I don't mean that you should write a script as I did, but think about what your message is, what you need out of that conversation, what needs to happen as a result. What will you do if the person that you want to speak to isn't there? Can you speak to someone else or will you call back or will you send them an email? Are there any words that you need to look up? Because it will be easier for you if you look up any new vocabulary before you decide to make the call than if you try to do it while you're on the call. So obviously you can't plan for everything that the other person is going to say, but make sure that you know all the main vocabulary that you think may come up in this conversation. If there are any special new words because of the subject that you're calling them about. And also, what might the other person want from you? Is there any information that they may need? And do you have that information before the call starts? You may not. You may not know what they'll want from you. But if there's anything that you can think of, then you will feel less stressed if you have the information to hand and you don't have to start looking for it while you're on the call. And also, if you're speaking to people in English who are in a different country, just be aware of the time difference, too, because for example, England to Germany is only one hour, but if you, for example, if you ring at eight o'clock in the morning, then it's seven o'clock in the morning. And generally, English people don't start work at seven o'clock in the morning. So just just be aware of that. It, with England, it doesn't really matter. But if there are other countries with a bigger time difference, then um, it may mean that you're calling people at times when they won't be there. Also, if you find a quiet place where you can have this phone call, First of all, it will be better for you because you won't be disturbed. But secondly, you're really relying on your listening skills here and it will be easier if there isn't any background noise that will make it more difficult for you to hear the other person. So that's point one. Point two is be clear about what you want to achieve. So be clear with yourself. Why are you making this call? Is it to, to gather information? Are you trying to communicate information? Are you trying to check something? Are you trying to make arrangements? Whatever it is, then if you know what you want to achieve, firstly, you can see whether you've achieved that by the end of the call, but also it means you're less likely to forget something. So forgetting something could be a problem because it means you have to call back. Um, and it would be better for you if you get everything done within the first call. So just check that you're clear about what you want to achieve with this call. And the third point is remember that the other person has no nonverbal cues. So if you're in the same room with somebody or on a video conference, 
you can smile at them you can nod in agreement or you can shake your head if you don't agree but the other person if they're on the telephone has no idea what you're doing so if you agree with them then you have to you have to say that verbally somehow you can't you haven't got any of these non-verbal clues that you may rely on in other situations and the fourth point for today is think about your tone of voice because how you're feeling can affect your tone of voice for example if you're angry then it often shows in your voice um, and I'm not suggesting that you would be angry when you're making phone calls but you can one of the things that I see sometimes is people feeling nervous because they have to speak English which is natural but if you sound nervous you can sound a bit unsure and if you're trying to tell somebody about a new project or a new idea or if you're trying to sell something then your sounding shy and nervous doesn't sound as though you really believe in this idea if you if you can't sound enthusiastic then the other person might think oh this person doesn't really believe in the new idea or isn't really behind it so if you're trying to sell something either a material product or an idea then try to think how you would talk about this thing in your native language would you sound enthusiastic if you would try to do it in English because the other person may not know that you feel shy about speaking English and they may come to the wrong conclusions because of the way that you're speaking so I know that I've done this in the past I've I've sounded really shy I've given as little information as possible so I had to speak as little as possible but that that wasn't really what I wanted to do I had loads of ideas and I know that after that particular meeting that I'm talking about I didn't do myself justice or my idea because I was too focused on saying as little as possible because I was nervous and there was so much more I could have said and done that day and now I I do things differently I try not to think about feeling nervous as much but it's it's hard it comes with practice but it's just something to be aware of because the other person can hear your tone of voice and they may they may get the wrong idea also if you're reading from a script which which isn't a good idea but if you have some information you don't want to forget anything people can often tell that you're reading so it affects the way that you speak sometimes you don't have as much emotion in your voice if you're reading from a text and sometimes you can speak too quickly because you want to get to the end of the text um, and also people can tell that you're reading because of the, the way that you speak there is no there are no pauses it's, it's very fast and often people can't think that quickly um, and so they, they may know that you're reading and then that may cause them to disengage so it's better to maybe refer to notes and have bullet points but don't write full sentences and then read from those full sentences when you're having a telephone conversation so the main point there is to make your voice match your message so I hope those four tips were helpful there will be another six coming in the next two episodes and if you're somebody that has to speak in meetings as well as on the telephone you may be interested in a webinar that I have it's a webinar that I I delivered in June of this year but I have a recording on my website so I'm going to put the information about the webinar on the show notes page so that would be www.englishwithkirsty.com slash podcast slash episode 5 and on there there will be information about this webinar that was called feel confident about contributing to meetings in English so if you'd like to watch that it's about 45 minutes long then um, send your details through on the form and I'll send you the information so I hope that was helpful and I'll see you again next week I hope you enjoyed this episode of the English with Kirsty podcast if you have any questions or comments my email address is kirsty at englishwithkirsty.com or you can go to www.englishwithkirsty.com slash podcast where you'll find information about the individual episodes.